Hi everyone, today I'll evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the genetic testing company, Invite. This company is highly requested, but has been sitting in my to-do list for a very long time. Apologies for that. I'll analyze this company based on the scientific fundamentals to see whether it will be part of my biotech portfolio. But first, let's roll that intro. I've been teaching biology since 2004. On this channel, I hope to simplify and explain the science behind the companies that's driving the genomics revolution one video at a time. Before I continue, I'd like to state that I do not hold any positions in this company at the time of making the video. Also, I do not know anyone working in this company as well. Because I'm busy right now as it's the exam period of my students, this video will take a more conversational style featuring less illustrations. For starters, Invite is a genetic testing company where requests can be made for panels of genes to be sequenced. I think this company is well known because Katie Wu has mentioned it directly in several interviews and they hold a large position in this company. Back in 2020, this was one of the top 10 in the ArcG ETF. So is there a growth opportunity for this company and can Invite take advantage of the genomic revolution? Let's find out. The frontline companies driving the genomic revolution are the gene editing companies utilizing the CRISPR-Cas technology to modify the disease-causing mutant genes in patients. Out of these, I picked Beam Therapeutics as my high conviction play into this space. It is also the largest holding in my biotech portfolio. The second tier companies are the next in line to benefit from the genomic revolution. And this includes the sequencing companies because their technology provides the evidence that there is gene mutations. At this level, I picked Illumina as my high conviction play into the tier 2 companies and the only thing I'm sad about is that I did not buy into this company earlier. The third tier is where Invite play at offering genetic testing to the masses. Once the patient samples are collected, they will be sequenced and the results will be sent back to the patients or healthcare professionals. Once the patient receives the results, they have the option of a consult with a genetic counsellor that will take them through the interpretation as well as the action plan. This is an add-on at an additional cost by a third party on the Invite platform. This can mean sending patients to specific medical practices that can institute preventative measures, treatment, and even cure if the FDA approvals are sent out to the gene editing companies. Invite divides the gene sequencing into five categories based on the patient's needs. First is Invite Carrier Screen testing 288 different genes. The great news is that it is covered by insurance. Second is Carrier Screen which tests 61 different genes. Next is Cardio Screen which tests 77 different genes. The fourth group is Genetic Health Screen which tests 147 different genes, which is also the most expensive. Finally, diagnostic testing for specific gene or genes that may be covered by insurance depending on the medical condition. Now that we know how Invite works, let me bring out some of the problems associated with this business model. First, genetic diseases are typically serious and this would likely be already known through parents who are similarly afflicted. Genetic testing would not bring much more value beyond confirmation. Not only that, the hospitals are likely the first points of contact with these patients owing to how serious the diseases can be, which is also where the diagnosis would be made. In other words, if people feel that something is not right with their body, they will not be seeking out genetic testing as their first response. Second, Invite is considered a middleman and they have no IPs and little to no moat, thus making them very susceptible to competition. Not only that, Hospitals also have their own labs, and regional and national hospitals have significantly more resources to set up for genetic testing. They will be competing with Invite. In addition, hospital offers more varieties beyond the standard genetic testing. This is to identify other mechanisms that causes the genetic disease that has nothing to do with mutations. In my previous video on 10x genomics, link in the video description below, I mentioned that gene expression is just as important in determining genetic diseases, and this is something that Invite does not test for at all. Also, genetic testing does not take into consideration the environment's role in causing disease. Having genetic mutations does not mean that one will automatically have the disease. Conversely, not having the genetic mutations does not mean that there will not be any disease. Are you seeing stars? Let me repeat it once again. Okay, I'll do it slowly this time. Not having certain gene mutations does not mean there will be no disease. Companies like Grail, for example, uses AI to control for the environmental influence. However, this is something that Invite does not have at the moment. And I'm not done yet. 
I had to dig a little for this. Guess which sequencing technology Invitae adopts for their genetic testing? You're right, it's from Pacific Biosciences. No wonder ARK Invest is so big on Invitae. And on that note, I'm perplexed with the decision. Let me explain. Pacific Biosciences is known for their long read sequencing, but genetic testing for gene sequences are typically shorter reads. So what possessed the scientific team at Invitae to decide on Pacific Biosciences? Not only that, sequencing is a major cause that will eat into Invitae's bottom line. And the bill from Pacific Biosciences is one of the most expensive. Let me develop the cost thesis a little bit further. An average Invitae genetic testing package screens for a couple of genes and costs at least at least 250 US dollars. At most, this covers 288 genes. A competing genetic testing company known as Nebula Genomics costs 299 US dollars and it covers the entire genome. That is about 30,000 genes. You know why they are so competitive on price? That's because they are using short read sequencing. So Invitae cannot compete on the cost, does not have direct access to disease patients, does not have any IP, and is in the lower tier 3 of the genomic revolution. And on that basis, this company has still quite a ways to go before I'll consider adding it to my biotech portfolio. I know a lot of you, my channel supporters, like me to provide perspectives of the Beam Therapeutics updates. But at the same time, Illumina has released some good news as well. Should I combine the two stocks together and talk about it next week? Let me know in the comment section below. Recently, I've received a very interesting letter which ties into Beam Therapeutics that will spurn into another video idea. The list of videos that I want to do is getting longer every day. Ah! Should I be a full-time YouTuber just so that that I can clear out the to-do list of videos. And on that scary note, you've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Yang. Please take care of yourself and see you in the next video.